Hey guys, so I'm back with the GraphQL boilerplate and I wanted to make some changes to how we do testing. So I wasn't happy that we had it running in sequence and I wanted to do it so that all the tests run in parallel. And I had a few ideas and then you guys gave me a lot of good ideas in the comments as well. So I kind of combined a mix of those and I came up with a solution that I think worked out pretty well. Now before I came up with this solution or got this solution working, I also tested out one where I would run each test and for each test I would create a database so they would be isolated like that. But that did not work just because of how slow it was and it just would not scale as I added more and more tests. So I went with a different solution where I would um, start up the server only once, um, it would drop the database only once, and then all the tests would use this database and this server um, and this seems to work the best. So I'm going to show you how I got that working um, and then some of the changes that I made. So uh, first off I renamed a folder so I now have a folder called test utils. So before this was called test setup and the reason I changed this is just because I now want to have just kind of a folder where I can put all the utility functions I need for testing because there's one I add and there could be more for the future so I just thought it would be a better name. So I went ahead and in me, my package.json updated that name so source test utils is call setup now. Um, and then in my scripts I got rid of the run in bands because I want my just tests to run in parallel. All right, so the next thing I changed was how I did connections. So I had the uh, create type orm connection. So we can take a look at that. Um, that looked like this, but I wanted to make a little bit of a change to it. So I went ahead and created a new one called create test um, connection. And then what this does is it has a Boolean flag. So, um, and this Boolean flag controls whether we drop the schema or synchronize the schema. And the reason why I wanted to pass this in is so now in my uh, test, um, and when I start up the server and I'm testing, and we can see, so I check whether we are testing or not, and I await and I call create test connection and I pass true. So when I pass true, it drops the database, um, and then we're good to go. All the other tests will pass false um, in, or the default is false um, so you don't have to pass anything so in all my tests now I call create test connection and that is um, and I just pass in false or don't pass anything at all and that's how I create a test connection that um, one drops the database when I start the server but does not drop the database whenever I call it later so we can take a look at a test so the register test for example um, we can see right here before all I have a connection and I create uh, the test. Alright, so and then I just showed you how I was conditionally starting the server um, that would create a different type orm connection. Um, and then the other thing is I moved the uh, create confirm email link. So initially I had it in the utils package and I might change uh, move some other files around as well. Um, but I moved it from the utils folder to register because register is really the only um, resolver that calls this function. No one else really uses create confirm email link so it didn't make sense to put in utils and I could just delete this whole register um, module and now it would not be uh, basically there wouldn't be anything in utils that I would also need to delete. So I want utils to be more of something that is shared across more than one resolver so that's why I moved it into here alright and so I showed you the register test so you might have noticed that I also included a library called faker so I went with this one this is a library that helps you make fake data so this was a great suggestion that someone had in the comments to use this that way you would not have um, problems with the same email or password being used so now anywhere where I before was hard coding an email or a password, I'm now using Faker to generate the, um, the email and the password. So you'll see that throughout my code now. I'm also using that. So here we go, Faker, Internet, Email. And then in all my tests, I am doing that. And that seems to work pretty well. Oh, and another thing about uh, me moving the Create Confirm Email link, uh, you'll notice like we have some these thingies. So these are... Um, if I move this file, all these relative links break. 
So I actually have a utility because I'm using TypeScript. Um, I'll show you it. It's called um, Move. Where is it? Move TypeScript. So Move TypeScript allows you to right click and then move that file anywhere. So that's what I use to move this um, test and this create confirm email link and it did not break any of the relative paths. Um, so I'd recommend that if you're using TypeScript. If you're not and you're moving a file around, that's unfortunate. And actually I think in the new uh, Visual Studio Code uh, version, I saw that they have, uh, it'll move it for you if you're using TypeScript, uh, their relative links, which is pretty cool. But that is not out in the regular version yet. Um, so I showed you Faker. The other thing is, um, I just clear Redis. So one of, here we go. So like some, some of these tests are using Redis and we put some data inside of Redis. So when I start my server, I need to make sure at the very beginning, um, if we are running a test, I just flush it out um, and clear it. That way we don't have uh, basically old stale data sitting there before we start. Um, and then yeah, so let me show you guys the test running. So I can do yarn tests, and, and I think it runs relatively fast, at least compared to what it did before. Um, and I think it takes about, here, estimate six seconds. It's about seven, I would say, seconds um, or so. Some longer than others. So this one took a little longer. Oh, this is kind of interesting. It uh, failed, so we'll see what's going wrong. Okay, so this is the uh, account is locked. Okay, this is interesting because so this is the problem that I was having and one of the reasons why I was uh, flushing Redis because that would happen. I'm just going to run the test again. Uh, looks like I might still have a race condition in here then. I'll have to look at that. Because um, looks sometimes the test runs fine, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, okay, so I'll have to look at that. But for the most part, the tests now all run pretty, I would say at a pretty decent speed. Um, I don't, I actually, I don't know what to compare this to. I don't know if this is a decent speed, but I think it was doing better than what we had before. And at least the tests can now run in parallel. Um, though it looks like we might have a race condition, um, but I can't get it to occur again. At least all the tests are passing now. Um, so yeah. I'm much happier with how the tests work now. Oh, here we go. I got it to work again. I'll have to investigate what's going on with uh, this forgot password one um, and see what's going on there. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with this. And uh, the code is up on GitHub if you want to check it out. And there's some other changes here or there that I'm also going to uh, change with this uh, boilerplate. And then I'll be making videos about that as I change them. So that's it for this. Thanks for watching, guys.